Hola, Marco. Hola, Elena. Welcome back to the Thank you. Galleria. Thank you. Hola a todos. We're back here at Galleria Militar with Mark Gabriel. We wanted to catch up with him, see how the painting is going, see how he's feeling, to give you a little bit more of Mark, of the, his plans. And remember, this is for the Palapa Society, this is for the Palapa School. Uh, we need some funds, and Mark was very uh, excited. excited to donate a piece for us. And we're very grateful and fortunate that we are going to be having all Mark's process, creative process, all his secrets are going to be live, <laughs> all for you donors. So remember that this is for a bit, this is an auction. Uh, right now we're in 1500 and we're waiting for more people to bid. I hope this gets you more excited. <laughs> and also, uh, if you cannot bid, please remember you can donate anytime. We're going to give you all the information here where you can just click and donate. And there's no donation that it's too small. Okay, so mm -hmm. hi. hi. So how how do you feel? How does it feel to make a painting with a deadline? I think I have two minds about it. One mind is that I was a commercial artist for most of my life, so deadlines are I'm used to deadlines. But this part of my artistic life, this more fine art part mm -hmm. I was enjoying not having deadlines so it's <laughs> <laughs> so it's the two sides of my personality are sort of a little bit in conflict but I always but I think I thrive uh, under pressure I've been quite enjoying it I have to say mm -hmm. yeah I almost um, maybe I should have more deadlines in my life I'll get more stuff <laughs> <to>. okay <laughs> <laughs> and so how does it feel to be filming the process like are you aware that the camera is there or yeah. you totally forget about the camera and you're just doing your thing? It's hard to totally forget about the camera. I, you know, I'm very conscious of the frame. I want to, you know, I come from film as well. Um, spent 25 years of my life in film. So I'm, I'm also very good at forgetting it's there. So I, I set it up, I, let, I get a sort of frame I like, and then I'm kind of, I sort of, mm -hmm. but I'm also very conscious also of, I have been talking, I mean, I talk to myself all the time when I'm making art, but in this case, I sort of feel like I'm talking to people, <laughs> whether they're watching or not. But uh, so I'm obviously I know that it's recording, or I hope it's recording. Um, and then um, the other thing that's weird is uh, I always want to, you know, I'm like, okay, the painting is, you know, ready to sit now for another day, and I turn the camera off, and then I like always happens, it's like, oh, there's that little spot there, it's, you know, and I want to get back in there and do something, but then do I go turn the camera on again, or do I, you know, so I get these little, you know, I don't know, it's like, I, I'm constantly working on multiple pieces at, at a time, and there's, I could probably show you this, little canvases I have always sitting beside me, if I mix a color that I like, and I have too much of it, I'll put some on and make little tests, you know, on the side, so, it happens the other way around too, where I'm working on another piece and I'm like, ooh, this is a great, this would look great on there. And I just come over and I want to paint on it, but I'm not filming. So I go like, do I maybe have to get the camera all set up again? Overthinking it a little bit. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but it's, it, I, uh, I like the process. I think again, it helps, it's gotten me more oh, self-aware of the process because a lot of it is subconscious. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I can, like, if you haven't seen the videos that we have in our website, in the YouTube channel, we also are sharing them on Facebook, please watch them to see the process. It's really interesting, and, like, the first one that you sent to us, I saw, and he was like, of course, he's been doing it, like, he's, he was working in cinema, because you can see, like, how he puts, like, all the... Pinceles, the pinceles <laughs> are the brushes, like, the, like, just the frame is so beautiful, I'm like, of course, that's, <laughs> that's all planned. <laughs> so, yeah, please watch it, we have, like, three parts of the video now, and um, it's totally mesmerizing to see how it works, 
and to see how it's gonna evolve. Like remember now uh, there's super warm colors. Yeah. And because I know a little bit about what he does, I don't think this is what we're gonna see at the end of the painting. That's another thing. A lot of people are asking like. Mm -hmm. Today we had a meeting with the Fund and, the and Development Committee and they were like, oh, those colors are so beautiful, <laughs> so different from Mark. I'm like, well, it's not going to stay like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <But> <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's sad. It's not sad. You know, this will, you'll never see this again. Exactly. Um, and that's, there's parts of it and I'll pick the parts, but then you, I don't, they may stay there for a few layers and then eventually another layer. Just, like this little piece here almost feels like the sunset is like right yeah, it's happening it's beautiful pretty. but i don't know if that will last <laughs> we'll see <Yeah. laughs> so it's cool that's also part of the filming process it's been yeah. capturing it at all its stages where none of the other pieces people have to just part of the narrative is the little specks that you see of the process yeah. here you're seeing all of it and you kind of can see at some points, like even right now, I quite like the way it is. I mean, I almost could go, this, this is kind of nice. And I have friends who encourage more purely abstract stuff. Yeah. And I sort of have that in the, you know, sitting in my head, like at some point, maybe I will just stop and not, that's where the whales will totally disappear and yeah. everything else and it'll just be this. But. Yeah, because so I don't know if you heard, but th this is the last whale. Mm -hmm. So this is besides we have two more paintings. Maybe three. Maybe three with whales over here. Yeah. But he's not planning on doing more whales. So this is like the end of the whale era. So you have to take advantage of this. Right. It's that's why are you just like want to do something new? I think I need to move on. Okay. Yeah, a little bit. Um, maybe it's sea lions. Okay. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, no, but I, um, I just think it's maybe a good time to let it rest. And yeah. sort of showing the process for the whale piece, I think, is a good way to kind of go out. You know, yeah. we'll see. Thank you. Thank you for making us part of this uh, change. I think if you see, if you jumped on the website or if you know my work, you'll see that the layers um, do expose these kind of colors. Mm -hmm all the previous work and the work I'm doing now. I think what's changing is more of these hotter, earlier colors are being left exposed. Some of the, some of the pieces, you can see the hot oranges and yellows still peeking through. But the idea is that basically, um, I, 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 the process for me is starting with this emotional thing that gets me really, it's either really hot and saturated like this or it's really dark and then I bring it back over the course of depending how many layers I like really thick paint I like texture so I'll keep painting kind of from dark to light or light to light to dark um, and until I get a neutral field that I feel that I can then paint the yeah. subject on yeah if we can see like you'll see a little bit of what we have here you can see in the back the yellow and the oranges. Yeah. So that's why, that's why it's so interesting to see his process because that everyone is like, oh, Mark never does these colors. And no, the thing is like, all these colors are always in the back of the painting. Yeah. And that's what makes Mark's paintings alive. When you see like a little orange or yellow behind those blues are yeah. the ones that pop. Yeah, so. and it's a little sad, you know, because yeah. there's pieces of this painting as it is that that will never be seen again. And like I said, most of the time people won't ever see it, but yeah. this time we're exposing it, the process of it yeah. so you can, but yeah, you know, I think we sort of talked about it last time. Um, I try to keep the little moments. I can tell you this little piece right here really excites me. It almost yeah. looked like sunspots. Um, and I might make an effort to, when I bring on the next layers to leave that exposed. Like I said, this little, what looks like the sun is going yeah. down here. But they may not last, depending on how the painting progresses. They may be, the, I may move the horizon line. I might have to move the horizon line down. So this will then not be. So I don't know, it's sort of, that's sort of the fun part. I think maybe hopefully for you guys as well, watching along how it changes. It's not like watching Bob Ross where you're like, oh, okay, there's a little yeah. mountain coming, you know, and here's like a little, whatever, fluffy cloud. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's more, um, 
uh, built up in shapes and colors and textures until I'm happy with a mostly neutral um, field that I can paint on. Yeah, I feel that it's all about like light and dark. Yeah. No? It's yeah. It's all about like the feeling of the shadows and the light and it's like this. This is so beautiful. There's a luminous too when you've yeah. painted a color like this on top of a white, you know, a, a freshly gessoed panel. There's a luminous that is hard to get back. I mean, not hard, but you, it's a, for me, um, leaving some of this exposed, you'll see how, how luminous this is compared to the mixed colors I do. I know just in general, because it's acrylic, things are drying duller and yeah. darker than the paint you mix, unlike oil paint, which the color stays true yeah. when it dries. Oil paint gets a little duller and a little darker, but yeah. um, at the end, you'll see the part of the process, part of the end varnish, I use a gloss these days because it, that brings the color back, pops it back out. And then some of this stuff that maybe got a little dull in the process, these little hits that you'll see that, well, we'll see what, what, what survives, but they'll really pop out, you know, the little bits of orange or yellow or red. Have, have you been having comments of people that come in and look at the painting that it's right now it's super different from all of the rest of the painting? Yeah. Right now it looks like completely different colors and everything you have. Yeah, I mean there's a guy that came in today, actually just this morning, and he's a painter as it turns out. And it was because it's on the wall here, um, yeah. it's for anyone coming to the gallery it looks like, you know, a finished piece and it totally could be. Um, he, it was his favorite piece in the gallery. <laughs> so it happens. And Make also, him bid. I mean, that's what I said. I, t I yeah, that we have this on the window, the adventure in art. So, um, but yeah, the other thing is that sometimes, if it wasn't for the, this was a spe special piece for the Palapa, I'll have half finished pieces that people will come in and want to buy. Yeah. And most of the time I'll say, okay. You're the, you know, if you like this, if this yeah. speaks to you, um, then you can call it finished. For me, it's not finished, but for you, you can have it. Yeah. <laughs> but and when that happens and they take the painting, are you like, oh, I feel like a little bit like something inside of you that's like, oh, it wasn't finished. I yeah. wanted to give some other brushes or you just like. No, I do. I do that. Yeah. But I mean, I do that even when it looks, when I feel it's finished and I'm not quite ready to let it go. And yeah. most pieces aren't quite finished for me. Okay. It's usually having to put them on the wall for a show or having a client coming in that forces me to call it finished. Are those like sometimes maybe Jesse, the one that yeah. Mark <laughs> give it or? Yeah, yeah. Or other artists come in and okay. say, don't touch this. This is great. Yeah. And then I have to think about that a bit. Sometimes it stops me in my tracks. And there's other pieces. I have one back there that's been a year. I mean, it's a big one, seven by four feet. but. It's been a year that um, I finished other ones like that in six weeks, you know. Yeah. This one, I can't, and people, I've had it on the wall, and people have wanted to buy it, and I won't, I can't let it go until it's truly finished. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it depends on the piece. So you see we're getting very intimate with Mark. Thank you for sharing mm -hmm. all these little things, uh, like your life and your art. Mm -hmm. And today when we were showing the painting, someone was saying like, oh, I see a house, I see this, I see that. Huh. And that's the beautiful, also the beauty about as abstract, no? And right. I know it's not going to be abstract, but that's the beauty, no? Everyone was like, no, but okay, he did something, there's a house. Yeah. Or like, no, but <laughs> yeah. you can see whatever you want to see, you know? So everyone looks at this and then you're going to see how it changes and it's going to be an adventure, mm -hmm. totally an adventure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think that's my favorite thing about being an artist and having people interested in what I'm doing, whether it's painting or a song. I, I think interpretation mm -hmm. is my favorite thing. In fact, I usually don't, unless it's really obvious what it is, I'm not going to explain it for people yeah. because it's really important that they bring their experience to it and make it their own, especially if they're going to have it in their house forever. Yeah. And it's, I don't want to influence or pollute their mind with what I think it is. Yeah. <laughs> but there could be houses in there. 
There was. I mean, right now I don't see it. If you go like one stage mm -hmm. before this right. one, and you, at the end, we all are like, what? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so do you know right now what's the next step? Like, okay, don't tell us, but do you know? I do know. know. Oh, okay. Yes, I do know. I'm, I'm definitely done with the washes. You can see already this pinky mm -hmm. salmon color, um, which I normally hate salmon, um, but I really, I kind of quite like it. It was the first bridge into getting the pink any little thicker. So that the next, um, uh, the next layer will be quite different, actually, and okay. most of this, most of this will be gone. Okay. Most of this color will be gone. Yeah. Well, stay tuned because <laughs> it's gonna get very interesting. We're gonna see what the next facet, you say facet, facet of Mark's painting. Thank you so much again for oh my God. sharing your time with us. We know you're super busy, and please come and visit Galleria Militar. You're gonna see how this painting is going. You're gonna see all. Mark's work, you're gonna see Krista Assad's work that it's flying. Like they're <laughs> flying, so come and see before they all all the paintings go to their new homes. And uh, remember this is for the Palape School. This is an auction. Uh, please uh, bid, please donate. We are what we are because of your support and we're always grateful. And please if you cannot donate, you can support by uh, sharing, sharing with your friends, talking about it, uh, donate whatever amount it is, and just like like our YouTube channel. That would be a huge, huge help. And again, thank you so much, Mark. My pleasure. Thanks for coming thank over. Thank you. Okay. okay. So remember, our last show is at April third, but the last bid is gonna be April second. So if you want to bid, you come until April 2nd and then April 3rd we're going to announce the winner and we're going to have a very special live show with Mark playing and a little bit more of the interview and well, I we're going to do everything so it's fun. Thank you. <laughs>